time for church. Come on, let's go. Come on. Welcome to our worship from St Peter's Church in Rawdon on the outskirts of Leeds in West Yorkshire. Our service today will be presented both in English and in British Sign Language. We've guest contributions from Graham Kershaw from Christ Church Pelham in Halifax and who is part of our deaf ministry in the Diocese of Leeds. He will sign our Bible reading from John's Gospel about the raising of Lazarus. And also from Paul Bell, who is singing his song, Mend the Cracks of Gold, from a rooftop in London. We'll also have a look at a famous piece of art hanging in the National Gallery and explore what it teaches us about our Bible reading to help us in our lives today. But first, let us pray. Heavenly Father, be present with us today. We, like Jesus so many years ago, are surrounded by sadness and weeping and the fear of early death. We pray that Jesus may come into our lives and bring us new life and hope. Come, Lord, and recreate and heal us when we have failed. Take our broken lives and make them into something beautiful. Amen. Amen. Now Paul Bell will sing his composition, Mend the Cracks with Gold. This song seems to be really connecting with people. It's about kintsugi, the art of repairing broken ceramics with glue mixed with gold. The break isn't the end. It becomes part of the story, part of the beauty. Take a listen. Things you can't undo Some things you can't unbreak No amount of glue Can fix the mess we make Some things you can't unsay Some things you can't unhear You can't unthrow a punch You can't uncry a tear But you can mend the cracks with gold Mend the cracks with gold When everything seems lost You can mend the cracks with gold Mend the cracks with gold It could be better than it ever was Better than it ever was Time is a one-way street the Clocks won't be turned back 
shouldn't shy away From the pain that's in your past the Fragments all around It's easy to despair The broken and the worn Not beyond repair You can mend the cracks with gold Mend the cracks with gold Everything seems lost You can mend the cracks with gold Mend the cracks with gold could be better than it ever was 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 You can mend the cracks with gold Mend the cracks with gold When everything seems lost You can mend the cracks with gold Mend the cracks with gold it Could be better than it ever was Now over to Graham for our Bible reading from John's Gospel, where a broken, helpless situation, where God and Jesus seem to have let his followers down, is marvellously transformed. The Bible reading is taken from the New Testament, from the Gospel of John. Chapter 11, verses 1 to 45, and it's entitled, The Death of Lazarus. Now, a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary was the same one who poured expensive perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, now lay ill. very ill and both sisters were worried someone was going from Bethany so the sisters sent a message with them to Jesus when they found Jesus they said to him Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, This illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, 
let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you. And yet, you're going back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus, has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let's go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival in the region of Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die do you believe this yes Lord she replied I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God who is to come into the world after she had said this she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her. 
supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus once more, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man then came out from the tomb. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Now I want to introduce you to an amazing painting filled with depth of meaning and a fascinating history. This painting was commissioned by Cardinal Giulio de' Medici, who was then Archbishop of Narbonne for the cathedral at Narbonne. He later became Pope Clement VII. This commission was typical of the fascination of the powerful Medici family with the healing miracles of Jesus. Their family name, Medici, was derived from the Latin medicus, which means a doctor or medic. Under his patronage, the commission developed into a competition between two giants of the art world of the Italian High Renaissance. Michelangelo was backing the artist who won the commission, his protégé, Sebastiano del Piombo, and he supported him with drawings on which some of the figures in this painting are based. With modern technology, we can see under the layers of paint and see how some of the figures were modified to match Michelangelo's vision, drawings and instructions. 
Michelangelo was keen to prove the superiority of his team to that of the other Renaissance giant, Raphael, who had also won a commission to produce a similarly sized painting for display at Narbonne. The competition between them to win the patronage of the Pope and the powerful Medici family is an interesting story, but need not concern us now. The painting now hangs in the National Gallery in London, where it is NG1, the first painting catalogued at the founding of the gallery in 1824. The National Gallery's own notes on the picture say, At the request of Martha and Mary, Jesus visited the grave of their brother Lazarus and raised him from the dead. John chapter 11 verses 1 to 44. Sebastiano shows Christ standing with one hand raised to invoke the power of God and the other pointing to Lazarus, who is seated on the edge of his stone tomb. Mary and Martha had been in tears. Their heart was broken at the loss of their beloved brother. They could not understand why God and their friend and rabbi Jesus, who they loved and supported, had not been around when they needed him most. Their faith was cracking and breaking apart. And Jesus, bearing his own grief, had shared their tears and their loss, and even borne their anger and accusation that he was not there when they needed him. But he also brought the power of God into that hopeless situation. Those pointing fingers remind us that he stands with one foot in our brokenness and hurt and the other in the invincible power of God who can do all things. He shares our mortality and vulnerability, but at the same time connects us to the power of God who brings resurrection and life. Behind Jesus and to his right are the twelve apostles. They are his followers. They've been with him throughout his ministry. But now they turn to one another in amazement at the miracle they are seeing. The younger man standing to the left is St John the Evangelist. And the bearded man kneeling at lower left is St. Peter, wearing a characteristic orange garment, as often in art. In our picture, Jesus had already spoken the life-giving words, Lazarus, come forth. The main moment shown in the painting is just after that, in John chapter 11, verse 45, when Jesus says to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. In the upper left background, a group of Jews and Pharisees are depicted discussing the event. Martha raises her hands and turns her head away, unable to look. Her gesture reminds us that before the tomb is open, she'd protested that the body would smell. Maybe she was right. Mary is kneeling at Christ's feet in awe. Unlike earlier religious art, where Christ and his disciples, now seen as saints, would be portrayed with halos, by this time in the history of religious art, there is much more focus on the humanity of Christ and the saints, and the biblical events are portrayed with the characters in the story wearing contemporary clothing, and in European settings familiar to the viewers. Christ is present in the everyday. Let us pray. Lord, you call us from darkness into light. You raise us up when we are cast down. You give us life when we are dead. You restore us to our friends and families when we are broken and finished. Lighten our darkness. Raise us up. Pour your life 
into our souls today. That we, like Lazarus who was called out from the grave, may live and work for the glory of your name. Amen. And so, as we go on our way, we pray together the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for watching the video with us. It's good for us to worship God together. Next, we have another video and together we will take in spiritual communion. So please watch the video. It's based on a communion service in St Peter's Church and we can all be involved. And then later, we can take in Jesus spiritually into our hearts. So we're all involved with spiritual 